Hey, how's it going, everyone? How are you guys doing tonight, today, wherever you're from in this beautiful world? Today, it's a very beautiful, gorgeous day for us over here on the West Coast. It's a beautiful Easter Sunday. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day with your families and everything else under this beautiful sun. So, miscellaneous magnets. Hey, welcome, man. Cheers, bro. Um, so I, yeah, I've kind of been going over uh, a lot of, uh, I figured I'd do a show today. You know, I got to keep with the schedule. Um, haven't been feeling real good lately. Uh, stomach issues. <laughs> uh, but, uh, other than that, aside from that, I have been over the past two weeks, I've been going over IPAs. IPAs are some of the, one of the, they have so many different types of IPAs. It's not even funny. Uh, nine or ten. There's ten subs, and like, well, yeah, not, like ten is what I counted. There's like nine, nine that I have, but then there's like ten sub styles of the IPA, which are actually part of the nine that I found. I just did a bunch of research. A lot of this is not coming from just me, but also coming from resources that I studied and came up with and uh, found on the internet. This that. So, hey, J Dub, how you doing? Happy Easter, everyone. Cheers. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Hope you're doing okay, J Dub. Um, so no, IPAs are like one of the favorites. They're they're the ones that everyone enjoys. A lot of them. A lot, a lot of people can't handle them. My my wife hates them. She hates bitter bitterness in IPAs. It's a good thing they have all these substyles and these different types of styles uh, out there. Even like the like the milkshake IPA or the uh, the, the the East Coast IPA, the hazy is a real good one to, to have um, if you're not into bittering, uh, a bitter beer. So you get your West Coast and your Northwest and even now Southwest, uh, just all based on uh, what they're using in their areas, I imagine. Um, hell, it could be even cactus or whatever the hell they're using in the Southwest IPAs, probably a certain type of hop that's grown in that area. I don't know. But um, there's different types, though, and it's crazy. Patch and Evan, how you doing? Cheers. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here, guys. Happy Easter again. Um, so I don't mean to bore you, and you don't have to stay here all day long. <laughs> I'll probably keep this at about an hour or so. I'm going to start with a beer review. Sunfish, how you doing, man? Cheers. All right. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing good, man. Um, yeah, we'll start. We'll do a, we'll do a, a review, and I will probably do – I'll have to go get the beer. It's in the fridge. Don't have my cooler. But I'll go do another IPA. Uh, Got to take it easy today a little bit here. Uh, I'll probably be uh, smoking weed more or less more of the day <laughs> after this <laughs> due to some stomach problems. But um, we're okay. But um, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's knock this out. So we've been uh, we've been going over IPAs. I got one today that's a double IPA. I haven't done a double IPA yet. It's basically doubling the dose of hops, aromas, flavors, uh, bitterness, and also the malts. Are doubled and when you do that you're also balance you're, when you're balancing with the hops you're also getting a higher percentage of alcohol by volume so <laughs> I appreciate you guys being here is awesome um, so we'll go ahead and start this is uh, this is the one I have here uh, it's by the brewerage they're out of like the Central California I think let me see get this up here this is on my other camera um so I'll just kind of pull it away. How about that? And we'll just use this here, my voice for a second. Um, we'll go back to me. How about that? It's called the DIPA, double IP, IPA. Uh, when you see DIPA, it means double IPA, DIPA, four times, four times. That's why his name is. Let me get this banner off here. I was wondering what was going on. Four times, four times, DIPA. <laughs> So this guy, yeah, they're a Brarage West. Oh, it's hard to see. There we go. It's an 8% double IPA. 16-ounce can. Malted barley, raw oats, raw spelt. And uh, uses hops uh, by the name of Racco, Racco Nelson, Citra, Matueka hops. 8%. Yeah, let's do it. Let me just uh, get over here. Let me go big. All right. 
right on, man. I might have to take the hits there too. <laughs> so uh, I don't. Oh, here's a, a three nineteen twenty. It's a pretty, really fresh beer, like four week, three weeks or so old. Yeah, something like that. Super hazy. I mean, this is definitely a northeast style hazy D double IPA through and through. I mean, it looks like milk. It looks like thick, fruity puree. Great white grapefruit puree. Hey, Bourbon Bounty, how's it going? Just doing beer talk. Beer talk today is about IPAs and all their various styles, and I'm just doing a review on uh, a double IPA. I haven't done one of these yet on here on these uh, live shows that I'm doing, so um, I'm theming it. So every week's a different theme. Every week will be like this last week was IPA, closing it up today with an IPA, and then uh, I'll do uh, stouts next week. Next week's going to be all stouts. Um, we'll build a recipe and everything on Wednesday, and uh, Sunday I'll end up with the uh, beer talk about stouts. Everything stouts. So we got, all right, we got about a finger head here. Nice creamy head. Oh, oh dude, it's got melons. It's got like a little lemon citrus. It's got some like passion fruit. Um, little uh, pineapples through in, going through this. Um, it does kind of look like pineapple juice. Pineapple, um, grapefruit. Very pineapple-y. Huh. Smells good, like a juice bomb from hell. <laughs> hey, Bo, how's it going? Cheers. <laughs> I am back on the Coors Light. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it does, huh? It's all crazy, like fruit bomb. This is a double. And I... They didn't say it, but a lot of times they won't tell you what kind of IPA it is. But they just say dip. Uh, this is definitely brewed like a hazy or a New England style IPA, double IPA. Doubles are basically an imperial IPA, 8% or more. I, think, uh, I don't know what they go up to, probably like 10.6. I think it all is based on what the brewer wants to do with it. You know, I don't know. Um, how they brew it or whatever, how strong they want to make it. Cool. So let's look at it. Tension was nice. I talked for about four or five minutes there, and the retention kind of held its place down to about a quarter of a, like a fingernail. Uh, Lacing is already starting to grab on. It's very, very juicy. I already went over the color, but it is a very white, grapefruity, um, pineapple-y kind of look. Very pulpy, very thick. It's opaque, can't see through it. Nothing. I don't know who's on the other side of that. Very murky inside. You can see it in the light. Let's go ahead and taste. Mm. It's definitely sweet, but it's very well balanced. The hops, uh, the dryness in the in the back. It's a nice drying effect in the finish. It has a melon. I'm getting a poppy candy like melon, almost like a uh, like a honeydew melon, and then I get a I get uh, I get like a like a uh, like a passion fruit, passion fruit melon. I get pineapple, grapefruit, and the taste very thick and lathering around the mouth, very viscous and just thick. No alcohol present in the back there. Nothing going up. Let me get a swish. On the tip, it's kind of at the swish. You can get a little bit of the carbonation ringing up on the tongue, but it goes away really quick. It pushes this crazy lathering, like fruity bombness of sweet and uh, bitter all up around your palate and your tongue. With the flavors I mentioned, kind of like a, like a Fruit Loop uh, cereal in a way. Kind of tastes like Fruit Loops, but more bitter, more uh, you know, restrained from the sweet and not not as sweet. The finish is uh, a little, a little not so dry, a little more thick, and uh, kind of sticks there a bit, and then dries off as it starts to go down. You can get a little bit of uh, alcohol burn in the back of the mouth, 
but you can't get any of it steaming up through your nose. It's very nice, very thick, very nice, very, very yummy, very yummy. Mm. Oh, man. Tangy on the sides of the tongue, kind of a dry, uh, chalky finish, but it really lets you taste it. Um, man, out of five, I, you know, this is a five. <laughs> This is like some, I would definitely buy this again. It's 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 a gorgeous beer. <laughs> it's it's really good. It's really lovely. It almost has like a, a well. It's it's really such. It's got kind of a milk a milkshakey kind of uh, feel to it as well, like a milkshake IPA. But um, and that's actually not mentioned on my one of the pages here that I looked up. I don't think they have milkshake. But um, yeah. So let's go back to you guys. Looks like a long day. Yeah. Cheers. Doctor Pepper cream soda. That sounds good. <laughs> that does sound good. <laughs> Itch on my ankle. Oh, yeah, that's that sounds good. Show off. <laughs> So let's uh so let's go so that was the beer, um it's got more in there I'm gonna I threw it in kind of I guess you can consider it a nonic glass it's not really your typical glass for like an IPA, but um you can use them for it I should have probably I wouldn't have minded like a bigger sifter or something like that big bulb glass or something but um yeah so back to me how you doing. We got the motorcycle gang across the street. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and share a screen for a little bit. It's a freaking awesome beer, dude. Awesome beer. Awesome beer. So okay. All right, so this actually, I want to go here first because. I, I know about IPAs, but I don't know it all. So I figured I'd bring it all, you know, bring it up and, and get proper information spread out instead of me just talking out of my ass. Um, which right now, you know, never mind. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not going to read all this stuff, but I'm going to go right into like, these are like nine of the styles, none of the types. So you have a style, you have a category, and that category is IPA. India Pale Ale. Uh, it's considered a category by BJCP standards. That's how they would call it. That's what they would call it. It's a style. Um, there's several different types of styles and sub sub styles and this that that I've found and and that are the common ones are on this page. So it starts with an English IPA, um, which are they're British IPAs. They are, they're hoppy golden ales. They're six to seven percent, dry as a bone, and they have grassy, earthy, and light citrus characters. They usually always use English uh, hops like Fuggles, Goldings, which give you those flavors. Um, a good example they say is Meantime India Pale Ale or Marble Lagonda IPA. Um, I know you can see it here, but I'm just kind of reading out. I was going to do this. As a premiere, but I didn't have time to edit, so I have a new video going up tomorrow. That's what I was working on. But anyway, um, the West Coast IPA, English IPAs. I've I've actually made a few English IPAs in the past, and they're 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 good. I like them. They're more fruity, a little more relaxed. Um, that's what I always found. Not as uh, hardcore bitter hoppy. Um. So the 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 West Coast IPA. Is uh, see they, they don't have Northwest and they don't have they just have West Coast and they don't have the the new one that I've heard of is the is the Southwest which I don't even really have characteristics on that but the West Coast is more of a, a lighter springier um, um, more focusing on like the hoppiness the bitters the the ar aromatics the flavors uh, which the Northwest are too but they're more pronounced with uh, a, a deeper like malt bill. Uh, in other words, they use more malt, and they have to balance 
as they use more malt, they get a little more higher in percentage. So you're getting a less percentage with the West Coast where you're getting a higher percentage with the North Coast, Northwest. Um, you're still getting your bitter kick in the back, you're, but you're getting a maltier sweeter sweetness in the Northwest ones. They're darker colored, uh, a little darker, um, and the colors can range also. So that's just my take on it. Um, but they say here, West Coast IPAs take its inspiration from British IPAs and American hops. Uh, it's use of a big American sea hops, Cascade, Citra, Chinook. We'll go over hops in a little bit. So this one, well, actually, we'll go on it as we go. Cascade, uh, let's go over, let's find Cascade, and we'll kind of go over all the hops here. So I can scroll down real quick. Uh, popular Cascade hop was first developed by the USDA around 1972. They range in alpha acids from 4.5 to 7%. They have a fruity citrus aroma with spicy notes. Um, Cascade brightens up, IP, uh, brightens up IPAs, APAs, and other American ales. And, um, shit, sorry. Citra and Chinook. Let's go to Citra. Citra, they were released in 2007. The different hops, including, uh, they were bred from four different hops, including East Coast, Golding, and U.S. Tetanang. They, uh, hops are a cousin of, of, of cannabis. They actually, um, like any plant really, but they, they breed them the same, I imagine in the same, uh, the same way as you would breed uh, any, you know, with, with the cannabis as far as pollinating and stuff like that, uh, crossing breeds and coming up with uh, different types of uh, strains and stuff like that through crossing. So uh, this was a cross uh, citra. They range from 11% to 13%, so it would probably be more of a bittering hop. And uh, they, they have a fruity flavor. Um, citra, let's see, combining citrus hops and whole pellet from other fruity varietals like Simcoe Mosaic, uh, while these can also be substitutions for citra. So uh, grapefruit, bright orange, grapefruit, lemon, and other wonderfully tropical fruit flavors create an aroma that is totally unique to its popular hop. And then the other one was, uh, was Chinook. So let's go to Chinook real quick. Um, so this was made in 85 as a cross between Pethum Golding, Golding Hops and High Alpha Male. This dual purpose, it's a dual purpose, so aromatic and bittering, uh, flavoring, all that. So it it's, does everything, basically. It's uh, alpha acids range from 12% to 14%. Uh, it has earthy aromas, heavy bittering characteristics to make Chinook Hops perfect style for like IPAs, APAs, seasonal brews like winter ales and stouts. As Chinook grows in popularity, it is easy to find in, in both whole and pellet form for your brew. Uh, a less, though, a less, though for a less intense bitterness, you can certainly substitute with Northern Brewer, Columbus, or Nugget Hops. So that's, uh, those are your common, common hops used in a West Coast IPA, Northwest IPA, in your typical IPA. There's other, there's so many other freaking IPAs or excuse me, hops out there that you can use uh, that go well with um, with this. Uh, you would uh, probably want to use a a uh, an American style or even a West Coast uh, bred uh, hop and um, American uh, grains as well for these type of uh, for West Coast for an American style IPA. Um, they often use crystal malt. They're more significantly more bitter, sometimes topping 80 IBUs. Uh, which is about as uh, much as a human palate can sense. So looking at beer rigs today, didn't tell my wife, but it's getting more intriguing. Nice, dude. Dude, you're going to get into it, I promise. You will get into it once you start it. I'll be doing, um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm not, a, you know, I'm by no means a teacher, but I definitely want to start doing from beginner to uh, advanced. I'm going to be doing some uh, live streams. Uh, as soon as I get things together, so that that'll definitely be something. We might even build a brew a beer together or something, or have uh, four different spots where all or six different spots on the stream yard, and we're all uh, brewing a beer at the same time and kind of discussing it, drinking a beer, having a good time. Sounds fun, huh? Um, so we got so we got an East Coast IPA, which is basically a hazy IPA. Uh, it's what I have here. This I kind of want to call this a, a, a milkshake. But because of the milk, it just, it's very lactosey, very vanilla. It did have a lot of vanilla um, milkiness in it. But this is a, it's a relatively new style. East Coast IPA is based on the West Coast, 
with one fundamental difference, yeast, uh, where California brewers use clean, almost flavorful, flavorless yeast to focus the drinker on hop aromas and flavors. East Coast brewers are using mutated, complicated British yeast, uh, less attenuative yeast, so that you get the haze. It creates a haze. It creates, uh, there's so many things that the yeast does to the, to the um, East Coast IPA. There's also, you don't even want, you don't even put these in, uh, you don't even have a bitterness schedule for your hops. You usually put them in the, in the whirlpool and uh, at, a, you know, 185 degrees or so, let it do that for 30 minutes. And then you put another addition in the, uh, at the end of your, uh, a lot of them put it in the end of the uh, primary fermentation as it's fermenting at the end process. And then it kind of goes into its secondary stage and you got a more of a hoppy bite, um, flavorful bite, aromatic bite. So they're, they're very, they get the stone fruit, banana, tropical notes. Uh, you, you, you do get, you also do get, uh, I've, I've had some with citrus notes as well, citrus flavors, uh, but they very, very much so are stone fruit, banana, tropical notes, this, that. Examples are Alchemist, Heady Topper, Treehouse Julius, and other half citrus IPA. I would love to, dude. Miscellaneous, I would love to. I will sip bourbon while I watch you brew. Nice, dude. That sounds great. I would love to have you join in, man. You can sip whatever you want to drink. <laughs> sip. Um, so doubles and triples, they're kind of like in the same realm. It's all based on the percentage. So a double, your a doubles are it can go... Uh, it's like 8% up to like, man, I've even seen them as high as like 10 and a half percent. Triples start at 10% and go up, I believe. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but they push 12% to 13%. So these are still using their malt for their, I think they're actually going, well, they're going off. I want to say they're, they're a takeoff from either the American IPA, probably more than likely. Uh, everything kind of comes from the American IPA when it's an American style beer, but um, your Northwest and your and your West Coast beers, also I think these are a takeoff from those um, more or less. They're at, as you're adding more malts, you're adding more sugars, so you're also having to balance that sugar out. And through adding more malt, either in a double or triple, you're also getting a higher ABV, alcohol by volume. Um, so it's just a matter of percentage. So if it's up to the the brewer, if they want to call it, you know, they're obviously they're going by their percentages and they're going, okay, well, this is over 10%. I'll go, I'll call it a triple, but they can also call them a double. I it's just, it's all based on what they want to call it. Um, and also on what the percentages of those beers, um, percentages, everything when it comes down to it, they're also going to have a very highly pine, or high, well, they're gonna have pine. A lot of these have pine uh, aromas and uh, flavors, but they're gonna have a high hop presence. They're gonna have a high malt pres uh, malt bill when making these as well. Um, you would need a, a bigger system in order to brew a triple or even a double because you're adding way more malt in your uh, mash tun. So, uh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Bourbon Man. Love watching you guys talk about hop styles. It helps me when I am looking at local and other microbreweries. I'm a student. Nice, dude. That's great. Hopefully, I don't stir you wrong or give you the wrong information. Um, you know, again, these are from websites. Uh, hopefully, these guys know what they're talking about, but it sure seems like they do. So, um, and again, I'm learning too. I'm a student. I'm a student. You know, I am, and uh, we all are. I don't ever know. I won't ever know everything. I'll never learn it all. Um, Maybe one day I'll become a master at this, but really it's just fun. <laughs> um, so the belt, and so those would be uh, some examples of a of a like a of a, I went way ahead of myself. Of a double IPA would be Firestone Walker Double Jack, which is really good. Pliny the Elder, Cloudwater DIPA, nice man. Triple IPA would be a good example. Would be Pliny the Younger, Magic Rock. Unhuman Cannonball, never heard of it. Other half, I have an other half. They're out of Chicago. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have that name wrong. 
but I thought I had the other half. Um, all green, everything. Nice, man. I just got a Chicago made beer from my local brew shop. Uh, beaver teeth. Okay, so now we're in a session. Sessions are crazy. Sessions are are really cool. Um, they basically are made to allow a person to drink their beer, drink more beers in a session. Obviously, that's why they call it a session IPA. Um, they they go they don't go more than like it says here more than five percent, uh, probably anywhere from three to five percent I would say, and um, so what they do is they li- they add lighter they do the same hot bill they'll they'll add their bitters in their sixty their thirty their twenty their fifteen their ten five whatever they're doing that you know every five minutes or I mean excuse me every that means minutes is what I'm talking about so they'll go at sixty minutes, thirty minutes twenty minutes fifteen minutes and they add like an ounce or so of whatever it is based on however that many alphas they want to add to it at the time or flavors or it's all based on flavors and aromas. So at certain times you're getting more aroma. Uh, so you'd get more flavor and then you'd start to get more aroma at the end. And that's when you get into your um, whirlpooling and your dry hopping and stuff like that at the end for uh, straight up flavor and aroma in the end. But um, it's just, it's all, it's, it's kind of just uh, the way you cook it um, and the alphas that are being used. So session IPAs are no more than 5% all the way through the boil. Boom, boom, boom. So it's less alphas. It's less hoppy, but it's definitely got – still has that big feel to it. It feels like a big beer, but it's not a big beer. You know, you're getting the flavors. You're getting – some of them even taste like a 6% or a 6.5% uh, just based on the the, um, the 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 hops that are being used and, the, and some of the thicknesses of these, even though the the, the – the ABVs are lower. Um, it's crazy, but um, so we let's uh, after what they, so what they say after chasing high ABVs in the next biggest hop hit, some clever brewers decided we should probably rein in, rein it in for the more casual drink sessions, which is exactly what the session IPA does. Offer a big nose of hops at no more than five percent. They are cracker dry and dry hopped buggery to get the buggery to get the maximum amo- amount of aroma for the minimum amount of bitterness. So they are drinkable but full flavored as possible. Great examples are a Beaverton Neck Oil. Never heard of it. Founders All Day IPA is a very good one. Brew by Numbers is a session, a session IPA. Um, yeah. Let's check the check you guys. Let's get some education, Ronnie, for real. Cheers, man. <laughs> So a black IPA, black all these IPAs except for like the English, um, the Belgian IPA you can actually probably use more European style uh, hops if you wanted, but a lot of these are using the black IPA. I imagine what's going the Cascadian dark ale, also known as a Cascadian dark ale, um, smells like a West Coast IPA, but they're using um, they all use kind of uh, the same. Varietals of hops, um, a lot of the um, American. Uh, forgive me again if I'm wrong. American style hops, uh, the hoppier, more alpha, uh, more aromatic, more bitter hops that we have here in America. Um, I mean, you can use anything from New Zealand, New, uh, Australia, English hops. You can use your, you know, any European hops. This that, um, but. A lot of them are, I, I imagine, are are using American style hops, uh, except for like the uh, the uh, English IPA or even the Belgian IPA. Um, even though the Belgian is actually a takeoff from the American IPA, I believe. Arguably, not an IPA at all is what this Cascadian Dark Ale or Black IPA is. It's um if it, was, it was Cascadian Dark Ale, part of America in which it was invented, and likely the hops that. That was used to the idea of the style is to brew a beer that looks stout, smells but smells like a West Coast IPA. So you're getting the same bitters, you're getting the smells, you're even getting a, a slight. You might get a little bit of a darker, like a richer, maybe a maybe a slight a slight roasted character to it. But you, it's mainly for color. So they use Carafa uh, uh, malts, which is basically a uh, it's got our aromatics. It's got a slight flavor to it. But it's nothing there to – it's only for uh, coloring the beer to make it darker. Um, you don't want to get too flavorful of a dark malt or it will end up turning into what you don't want. So the Carafa malt really works well for that, for these type of beers. They are a little uh, a little more burnt tasting, 
a little more roasty, toasty, um, uh, kind of like burnt bread or toast or, or like a not burnt toast, like a like toast, like a toastier, uh, like a darker toasty, richy, rich kind of uh, flavor. But they have they impart these awesome like citrus west, like it says West Coast citrus bitter finishes with their aromatics and everything. Very nice. I like them personally. I think they're great. I think they're wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I like. I, I've always liked them. The uh, great examples are Vocation, Divide and Conquer, Beaverton, Black Beauty, Troubadour, West Coast. Coast. I've never heard of any of those. So we now, let's see. My wife is worrying about the weather. An ounce of planning. It doesn't look like we are going to get hit hard. Yeah, I hope not. I've heard about, I, well, I saw miscellaneous as weather the other, yesterday, yesterday, yeah. Yeah, black IPAs, they're not they're not bad. Um and they range, I I I wanna say oh I wanna say they range probably anywhere from like six two to nine five. I guess they can have a high range of percentage um based on the fact that they're you know they're a West Coast IP well they're the same range as a West Coast IPA for the most part. Um which I don't know the range off the top of my head. Um, all right, so we got two more to go here. The grapefruit IPA, I've honestly never even heard of a grapefruit IPA. <laughs> well, well, we'll run, we'll do the rundown. Belgian IPAs are a takeoff. I, heard, I was reading from American IPA, but uh, the, so a Belgian is a word shoved onto all kinds of beer styles and usually implies that a Belgian style yeast has been used. So the yeast imparts a big flavor in these types of IPAs. Uh, it's going to give you that farmy, you know, barn, if you want to call it that, barnyard um, or a hay or um, farmy, grassy, weird, wild flavor, you know, along with that uh, IPA flavor as well. So you're going to get the bitters, you're going to get the uh, aromatics, you're going to get the flavors of hops in these. Uh, can simply be an, a Belgian ale strain. So you're using a be Belgian ale yeast strain, which can add a spicy stone fruit edge to a beer like. Fuck, I couldn't even read that. To a beer like and Belgian blonde ales. I was going to say, Bub, I've had a Belgian blonde ale that was. They, I would want to use it more in a blonde ale. I wouldn't want to go too dark with those. Blonde ales, I've always seen them be like Belgian ale IPAs, have always been more of a blonde. Um, I could also, it could also mean Brettomyces have been used though, which depending on when it was added can, which is a type of yeast, could produce a pithy orange zest, z a cit a juicy citrus, or a farm-like funk. So, Troubadour Magma, Stone, Cali, Bel Belgique, Belgique, Lervig, Farmhouse IPA is great examples. Hey, Dickie, what's up, man? Cheers. I like the uh, Belgian. I like the Belgian blonde, the uh, Belgian IPA blonde. I like those a lot. The uh, the lighter blonde uh, Belgians are really good. With that IPA, I love the IPA uh, zestiness, the hoppiness. They're very good. No stouts, porter sours. <laughs> so grapefruit IPA is kind of new to me. I don't. I'm not really aware of these, but let's read it. This seasonal beer has become so popular and widespread, we think it deserves its own category now. While many see it, as, I mean, I've seen IPAs with great, with lots of grapefruit peels added and this and that. So maybe that's what these are all about. Is uh, as cheating to get the aroma and flavor from grapefruit rather than from hops. They're missing the point. As well as a gorgeous dialed-in grapefruit aroma, the fruit also lends an acidity to the beer that verges on sour. When made well, it makes. I can't read right now. When made well, it makes for a clean, bitter, and huge fruity beer that can be loved even by those who don't usually love beer. As big sea hops get harder to get hold of, fruit IPAs may well get more popular. So I am, I'm imagining this. When it comes to bittering your beer, I'm sure they use a great deal of the bitterness coming from the rinds of the grapefruit. If anything, the juice. I don't know if they would put juice in this. I'm not sure. Um whether it's in the boil or if it's in the dry hop, I'm not sure. But I imagine they use, they balance out any hops used with the bitterness of the rinds or anything that's thrown into the boil while they're doing that. 
Um, this just uh, my opinion. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. Um, so great examples of these would be Magic Rock, High Wire, Grapefruit, Ballast Point, Grapefruit Skull. Okay. I've had that. All right. And that's actually very good. Siren Pompel Mochello. Okay. So 10 substyles of IPAs you can't miss. Let's do a real quick rundown. These are ones, substyles. So uh, these are ones that we've already gone. I've gone over this. Our American East Coast styles is considered a substyle. Uh, I was just calling them uh, types, but I guess you can call them a sub style. Um, West Coast session fruit IPAs bring together uh, these IPAs bring together what on the surface uh, all this information I'm getting is in my description. I have uh, gladly mentioned these websites in my thing, so hopefully they have no problem with me um, bringing them out here. May seem like an unlikely combination fruit and IPA. Depending on the fruit, sometimes a combination can seem natural, like grapefruit and IPA. Other times it can be a pure forced, like strawberry jalapeno, which oddly sounds good. I just don't want to do hot, hot foods right now. Uh, occasionally, these are not every drinker's favorite, but sometimes a combination ends up being a, a cold hit. Um, bonfire Brewing, but uh, what the fuck? Oh, Pink Eye, Raspberry IP by bon Bonfire Brewing. Apricot Dog is by Dogfish Head. And Tree Shaker Peach IPA by Odell Brewing. I haven't heard of Odell in so long. I want to try Odell's beer again so badly. I haven't had them since Idaho, since I lived out there. Imperial or Double IPA, we've gone over. Wet Hop IPA. Wet Hop IPAs, uh, I mean, they're basically just using uh, fresh hops, undried, throwing them straight in. You could probably put them in the boil if you wanted to, but I, I think a lot of times they're using the dry hop, uh, possibly in the Whirlpool. Um, adds a more of a fresher, I don't know, just a more fresh uh, appeal to the beer. Hoppy, very hoppy. Um, Let's see what they say. For someone who enjoys IPA for Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year is wet hop beer season. Since hops are usually pelletized, the purists would argue that something is lost when hops go from flowers to pellets. I agree. I like flowers. I like the flowers. It's really what I try to use. If they don't have uh, flowers, I will use the pellets. Hi, Vanessa. Cheers. Yeah, right? I know. Miscellaneous. That looks sounds good. Open mind, open palate. All sounds good. Um, hell yeah. So, yeah, I'm a flower guy if I can help it. I like to get flowers. I'm the same way with my bud. I like to ha ingest flowers, <laughs> although concentrate is. But anyway, this is about beer. Um, a narrow window of hours exists to get hops into the beer making process. Okay. So uh, examples of fresh hop IPA would be Fort George Brewery, which is one near me. Uh, so Fresh and So Green Green by Terrapin Beer Company. Hop Harvest Series by Sierra Nevada. Hop Trip. That's a good one. Hop Harvest is very good. Hop Trip IPA by Deschutes. I don't believe I've had that one. Hot Peppers and, and Hot Dark Chocolate. Oh, my God. That sounds good. Vanessa, that sound, you nailed it. You got that right. I need to wet the whistle. All right, wood aged IPAs, absolutely amazing. I love anything wood aged. I love anything that's been in fooders that has been sitting there for years and years or however long they got to do it. I know IPA in general, you can't, the shelf life is not very long. Um, my guy up the road, Justin was saying six months, but that still seems a lot longer. I'm just, no no offense towards Justin, but that seems a little long for me. I would want something within three months only because I want that fresh uh, feel to the beer for an IPA. Um, the hops do help, though, to preserve the beer. So you're not going to go totally bad on a six- to eight-month-old beer, but sometimes you may. <laughs> and miscellaneous has actually uh, gone through the uh, experience that, so – Peanut butter pour. See the peanut butter. I can't. I'm putting a peanut butter one up tomorrow. I absolutely hated it. I hated it 
to the most. Like I gave it, you'll see the score tomorrow when I put it up. Totally terrible. It was, I'll, I don't even want to get into it. I'll let you see it tomorrow. Um, it should be a fun one to watch. So look out for that. Should be going up around uh, to my time tomorrow, five o'clock Eastern. So, um, in the in the Brewers' hands, this style can be a marriage made with Valhalla, like barbecue and chainsaw whittling, whittling. Uh, different woods can change the finished product in flavor and appearance. Of course, uh, many brewers have tried their hands with an IPA and unlikely wood, and an unlikely wood, and come out with a new favorite beer to show for it. That reminds me, I made, it was a, it was a, no, it was an American IPA and I got tamarack strippings from my stepdad in law, father-in-law, stepfather-in-law. And he's like, dude, make, can you make a lighter beer? I mean, it was a pale ale. I believe it was, no, it was an IPA. It was a lighter, it was American IPA. And so I ended up putting them in the boil, but I also threw some in the secondary and let them sit for about a week. And that was the most intense. No, I actually just secondary with them. I didn't put them in the boil. It was a long time ago. This was like 13 years ago when I brewed this. Um, but that was the most, and I remember it to today, the most incredible woody beer I have ever tried. Super, super, super resinous. Um, oh, my God. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The, the type of woods you use, of course, are going to import in part the, the flavors that you're looking for or whatever you're wanting. And they, some of them can be bad. Some of them can be really good. And when I say bad, they can be disastrous. But um, some of them you have to – you do have to – when it comes to brewing, you do have to uh, – I usually like to boil mine and kind of, you know, get any bad things off of them, especially if you're putting them into a 72-degree fermentation, secondary, whatever. Uh, you don't want to um, contaminate the beer. So barrel-aged IPA by Black Tooth, White Oak Blueberry IPA. Damn it, that sounds good. Cigar City, Rumble French and American Oak, American Oak, damn, by Great Divide. Jeez. Oh, they're awesome. Oak-aged Unearthly IPA, Southern Tier Brewing Company. Uh, I've only heard of, so I've heard of Cigar, Great Divide, and never heard of the other two. Black IPA, we know about coffee IPAs. I bet a pecan wood barrel. Ooh, man. That would make a very... That might also be very good. I wonder how that would taste. Even in an IPA. I, I was thinking more of like a brown or a porter for something like that. Or even a stout in a pecan wood barrel. Damn. With a little bit of whiskey. Maybe some kind of uh, whiskey or vanilla notes in there. Yummy yum. I had a peanut butter stout at a place called the Beer Growler here in here in in Winston Salem. Nice. That's where I'm kind of from. Well, I'm not from. I lived there for a while. It was pretty damn good. Nice. See, I what what my take was, and I'll just give you a little sneak peek at what my take was. <laughs> On the there was too much peanut butter. It needed to be more balanced, and it was a sweet stout. So you're getting – it was very sweet, and the, the stout itself was very good, but there was too much peanut butter. It needed to be less peanut butter, but just a slight amount to where it was blending perfectly with the milk chocolates um, in, in this sweet – because sweet stouts, they use lactose. So they're – if that blended – and balanced perfectly, I would have had a different thought on it. I won't tell you what kind of beer it was. I have showed it in the past week, but look out for it. Um, my brother in Texas has a huge pecan wood pile. It makes delicious. Oh, my God. Yeah, if you smoke those up. Oh, yeah, dude. Damn. Damn. Yeah, smoke that up and just smoke the wood, right? Would you smoke like the – you would smoke the barrel with it. Could you put like the barrel over the smoke and kind of like – I don't know how you would do that. I guess in order to get like the woody, the the, the smoky pecan uh, smell and flavor in there. Probably even burn some pecans inside of the barrel. 
A fresh batch of rye moonshine aged inside a pecan wood barrel could be. Oh my god, that could, really could be. Sounds great. Vanessa is speaking my language. <laughs> hey, Psycho Ducky, cheers. All right, man. Welcome, man. So uh, we're almost done here, but I'll, I'll stop. You know, I don't want to get too boring here. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll start chatting with you guys in a little bit. We'll do another review. Um, after, of course, after I drink my beer here and, uh, then we'll do another review and we'll call it good. Well, we've been on 45 minutes. That's perfect. Okay. So, uh, coffee IPAs are, are, are also a really good, uh, I've, I've always liked the coffee IPAs. I like a coffee, uh, milk with milk with lactose added. Uh, I like more of a, um, lactose, ad, like, a with the lactose addition. I like that sweetness from, and the vanilla, like, uh, like a milkshake, uh, coffee IPA would be really good. Or uh, even a hazy a East Coast IPA coffee. IPA. I don't know about it. Eh, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's something to think about. This one sounds like it would uh, be a barista's nightmare, but lovers of the style swear that that opposites attract, which I believe they do. The smelt the smelting of coffee and hops is one invention that may seem unusual, but the style is growing in popularity. Many brewers have even teamed up with the local artists and coffee roasters to ensure that coffee chosen is perfect for the brew. Uh, coffee IPA examples would be the Coffee IPA by Fate Brewing Company out of Boulder, Colorado. Hoppuccino, uh, made by Copper Tail Brewing Company out of Tampa, uh, Florida. Stone Dayman Coffee IPA by Stone Brewing Company. Um, yeah. And there actually, I'm, I'm going to go over this one real quick. Hence my construction of my wood-fired oven here for smoking foods and making baked Good. You even have a smoked apple pie on the smoke. Oh, my goodness. Vanessa, you have got me hungry. I ran out of coffee and milk yesterday. <laughs> the psychotarchy. You know, I just heard that in thick Aussie accent. <laughs> Drinking that sour again. It still tastes earthy. I think at the papaya, it's the papaya. Dude, I that sounds great. Miscellaneous, I got a really good sour myself with lactose, and I'm really looking forward to it. That lactose makes a world of difference in a lot of these sours. Um, I like lactose in my sours. I don't know what it is. It gets a little too much for my stomach. I've got a weak stomach, man. I can't help it. Um, so, oh, eclectic IPAs. I've never heard of these in my life. So these are IPAs that don't really fit into specific subcategory categories. These beers showcase ingredients of many and varied origins and embody the spirit of, of experimentation So that so many craft brewers embrace. Uh, get out there and try something new, especially on number IPA, whatever the fuck. Um, eclectic IPAs, eclectic. Eclectic IPA examples would be Galaxy White IPA by Anchorage Brewing. Oh, I've had the Galaxy. So they're basic. Okay, so they're like white IPAs, rye IPAs, agave IPAs, uh, sour IPAs. Uh, so they're the they're not your traditionals. They're ones that they're they're experimental beers. So uh, and those I actually wanted to. I love rye and I love the dryness of rye. I love the flavor of rye. I absolutely love rye IPA. I've had a rye IPA before, and they're delicious, fucking delicious. Agave IPA, I would think, would be more on the lines of a Southwest IPA using agave cactus. Or is, is that a cactus? Yeah, it's a cactus. Um, <laughs> but um, and then the sour double IPA, a double uh, with it's going to be. It sounds like it's going to be a little sweeter, a little more sweet sour. Stronger in, uh, stronger in ABV, South Street Brewery. Oh, like the many faces of the beer, the spirit of the IPA day is one with infinite possibilities. At best, it is a day when old friends and new beers meet and memories are made. Hell yeah. All right, so enough of that one. This is another one I like. I'm not going to go over this, but uh, craft beer, you know, they. I looked up uh, India Pale Ales and craftbeer.com is excellent. But I'm going to go real quick, real, real quick. We'll go to English style. This is how... If you want to learn about a beer style, these guys are great. I'll have them in my description. Look at the description that they give on an English style IPA. Everything you want to know about them. Look this freaking website up. You hover over and even get like over the right here. You can even click on it.
Hold on a second. I'm going. I'm getting some uh, technical difficulties here. Sorry about that. It was my VPN. I gotta disconnect it for a moment. It's causing me to uh, have problems with loading. Yep, I knew that was it. Mastered. <sighs> so basically, I just gave you a screenshot of stuff that you probably didn't see. And uh, so I apologize for that. But I don't know even know if you heard me. So we're back on. Sorry about that. <laughs> so tell me, did you guys see my screenshots to the very end? Did you hear me? I'm not going to start over again. I'm, 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 I'm probably more upset than you may think that I look. <laughs> You lost sound. So, damn, you know? That sucks. Oh, well. I tried. My computer has been giving me some issues lately, so it's the way it goes. I'm here. We're alive. Nothing happened. The world didn't blow up or anything. So, um, I just basically went over a bunch of styles of IP uh, subcategories, let's call them. Uh, or types of IPAs. Um, so upset I need a beer. I'm drinking this still. It's warming up. I'm going to chat with you guys, and then we're going to do another beer review of an IPA style. Um, there, Just to kind of reiterate what I was talking about, if you didn't hear me. Um, oh, so you did hear the eclectic. I don't know if you saw the screenshot, but, uh, but yeah, so we got down to that. That's good. I, I was just trying to shout out morebeer.com. They had a big hop list. Check out morebeer.com. They've got great products there. Um, I usually go to like eBay and stuff like that when I'm shopping for stuff or Amazon. But more beer, you know, sometimes a lot of these companies will offer uh, free shipping if you go over a certain amount. So if you're buying a big old $300 system or a $1,000 system, they're going to do free shipping. Real good uh, website. They offer a, a big list of hops so that I was going off of. I also use Beersmith for, um, for you know, the thing I used to, uh, the tool I used to build my recipes. They also have everything you need to know about hops, grains, uh, yeast, everything. Um, and then I had my other, uh, I just, I shut them all off. Oh, they're actually right here. Uh, I have uh, craftbeer.com is awesome. Um, Let's go there real quick. Hopefully we don't. Uh, the beer styles. Let me go uh, share screen real quick, real quick, real quick. Beer styles. We can put in, uh, I just choose IPA. Boom. Takes you to four different IPAs. I went over this just to kind of show you what they offer. I mean, it's look at how much information these guys give you. Um, they give you the SRM, the color, the IBUs, uh, international bitterness units, and the uh, alcohol by volume. They give you the food pairings, the glassware, the, 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 the temperatures you want to serve the beer at, commercial examples, appearance, flavor, aroma, sensations, ingredients, just amazing. Uh, other styles you may enjoy as well. Just a great website. Uh, beer Merchants was another one I took information from. And you'll see all these guys on my uh, on my thing, so on my description. So cool. That's kind of sum that all up. Damn computer issues, right? <laughs> but you guys got a good gist. Uh, did you see the? Uh, you saw the screenshots, uh, the, my my screenshot, my my share screen of everything up till then. So you, you got a good idea, and you heard me as well. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it was uh, somewhat of a learning lesson. Um, I'm gonna break into uh, stouts next week, uh, anywhere from even a sessionable stout on up to the strongest stout possible, whatever I can find. So um, we'll build a recipe Wednesday. Uh, for some kind of stout, I'll figure it out. And then Sunday we'll stop. We'll end it with a beer talk about stouts that we've gone over this at all the beer styles. 
my key my key idea here is to uh, to to teach others to show others what beer styles are out there and what they're all about how they were uh, brought to this world <laughs> who made them who you know I I, I didn't really uh, elaborate with that too much um, the history um, but it's to understand styles a lot of people just think that there's just Budweiser there's just Coors there's just this and there's just that. But I think uh, time's gone by, and a lot of people now are starting to understand and pick up on the fact that craft beer is is a thing now. Um, I mean, they make really good light beers as well, really good light lagers that are still craft, considered craft, made by small microbreweries or even macro breweries that are delicious. So, Ari, how you doing? Cheers. But, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll continue to – we got a lot more guy going – We'll continue to go and we'll continue to learn each week a new style and not only the styles, but the sub styles of that category as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to drink this beer. We'll chill and chat. How about that? <laughs> and um, that was a cool little slogan. I like that. I'm going to put that down. Uh, let's scroll it. Okay. So, hell yeah. It's so, so much arcade like weed. I mean, hops, like I said earlier, are the cousins. They're in the, they're in the same can, cannabis. Can I say this right? Cannab, cannabinaceous or whatever family. Cannabin, how do you say that? Cannabinaceous. Um, but anyway, you know where I'm going with that. They're in the same cannabis um, scientific part of it all. They're still the same uh, in the same family. So they they uh, they don't grow the same, but in a way they do because hops actually, uh, when hops are growing, well, mine are actually sprouting up good now. As it gets hotter, they get bigger. They grow, they'll grow like a foot, foot and a half each day. Boom, 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 big old binds. And they're heavy binds. And the flowers towards the end of the month, they are six months, just like pot. Um, and they have little hairs that come up, little hairs, just like uh, the beginning stages of a, of a bud, a cannabis bud. And then they start to grow into a, like a, it looks like an armadillo shell or something. It, it's like a, or a, like a, like a beetle or something. They look like little, they're little like bullets and uh, just really cool. You open them up at the end though, and they have this yellow lupi, uh, humulus lupulus. It's uh, like the, the yellow pollen that's in there, and that's what you're really wanting. That's where the aromas, the smells, the flavors are all right there. So, But they're all part – they're all in the same family species, which is kind of why they go hand in hand, you know? They're starting to add CBD and, and perhaps even THC in, in legal states where they can do it. As soon as, as soon as they get in, you know, into a uh, more federal level, a federal legal level, then we can probably experiment with that more. But um, yeah, ah, this beer is good, man. It's very, very good. It's very good. It's a little warm though. We could do that. We could do that. Um, I'm on an hour. I don't have to do another uh, beer review. I did one in the beginning, so that's good. Um, how many weed strains? Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. I'll, I'll, I'll put one up. We'll do a live air, uh, and do all that. <laughs> I had, how many uh, weed strains are there versus beer varieties? Uh, whew. you know, I couldn't answer that. Uh, lots like weed, weed is like vast i mean look behind me on beer styles i mean this isn't i've been told the one straight behind me this one right here isn't totally accurate the one over here is probably a little more accurate but you can see i mean just from what you can see here there's a lot of styles but there's if you go to um leafly.com l-e-i-l-e-a-f-l-y.com i'm sure you guys have seen that uh you can look up all the different various hops on there or hops, uh, uh, cannabis uh, strains, and there are so many strains. It, I think it's there's way more strains I think than styles than 
sub styles and even styles of beer. I, I really do have to say that. I, um, I mean, growers are constantly coming up with different uh, strains. I mean, almost every day, almost every month, week. I mean, it seems like they're always constantly doing some cross with some cross. Same with hops, though. Hops are always coming up with something new. There's always something new. But Leafly's, I really like Leafly. I um I did, I started that, but then I, uh, Bourbon, I, I started that, and then I took cannabis off of my channel. Um, so I didn't want to, because I kind of wanted to keep it just beer here, and then Trees Whiz is my other channel, um, as Miscellaneous stated there. I'm I'll, I'm gonna do a, I'll do a live stream uh, with you know where we'll just uh, we'll just in part we'll we'll partake of that only, <laughs> but um nice miscellaneous nice dude. But I I did I did pairing with uh, weed and it was actually very uh, interesting. I was actually pulling the smoke down and then taking the drink and then pulling it both back up at the same time and getting the taste of the beer through the smoke. And it was very through the exhale, and it was very, very interesting to see how that worked. Even smelling the fresh or the dried bud with uh, with that. So, but anyway, beer related. <laughs> um, what do you know? Good day. <laughs> how you doing, buddy? <laughs> ducky, ducky. Who's got the ducky? <laughs> You're gonna learn tonight. Yeah, that well, that's uh, maybe I'll do. I could do a beer review with the weed probably in the net in my live stream if I go next on that. I'll have to take a, a little break after this, so but I'll, I'll get on you know within the half hour or so after. So, but um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and tie this up. But I really appreciate it. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, guys being here and uh, taking the part uh, part of your time today to to come check it out, hang out with each other as well, and have fun and uh, learn a little something. Sorry about the technical difficulty there. Uh, unfortunately, that's just what happens sometimes. But, um, of course, it's a beautiful day, a night, day, wherever you're from in this world, right? Cheers. You guys have a good night, and thank you so much. Happy Easter. Stay safe.